So there's a lot of things going on here. I've made this with the Bonnie Mega Bundle, which contains uh, characters and objects and poses. And there's a lot of stuff in there, including three exciting shader products. Those I've used on the dress here. So this is not what the dress originally looked like. The render came out black and white directly from Das Studio, so I did take it into Photoshop, but I didn't apply the black and white effect in Photoshop. That came out of Das Studio. There's also this wonderful bloom effect going on here. If you zoom in, then you can see that her everything that's white in her surface, that kind of seems to illuminate light. And I didn't put an emissive shader on this or anything. This is just a post-process effect in Das Studio called the Bloom Filter. And it, it reacts with every whitish type surface. So anything that we see that gets the bloom. And then of course, somebody's pointing the gun at her little story going on. There's some tussle has happened here in the detective office in the kind of in the 30s or 40s, don't know yet. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's that's she probably found the evidence in that bag. And you know, now whoever is the evidence is pointing towards is threatening her with a gun. That's the story and I'm sticking to it. This was a previous version I had made of the render and then made some small adjustments here. You can see that the bloom effect is different. So this has less bloom. It also has bloom, but it has less bloom. And this is not a surface effect. This is a post-process effect. But other things that I've done here is I've taken the carpet out. I thought that was a little bit too busy. I've turned the evidence bag around slightly on an angle so that it actually looks like a bag rather than just a box. And I've added that extra bloom effect. The clouds in the background here, they were done in Photoshop. In fact, do I have something like that that I can show you? I think I have. I think I have. Here it is. This is what the file looks like in Photoshop. So this is just a, this is just a logo that we're not talking about that. There's a little bit of color correction on here to make it a little bit crisper. And then this is just a slightly enlarged version that worked better with the logo. So this is the original render here. Then if the clouds weren't there, then this is what we see. So there's nothing in the background here. There was no HDRI or anything used in the scene or nothing that would produce a good looking uh, background here. So I've added some clouds generated with Photoshop and the clouds also have a slight blur effect. So I've just made them a little bit blurrier than they would come out. And uh, that adds to the depth of field effect that is also in the scene. This is a little bit out of focus. The background is a little bit out of focus, just so that we put the plane of focus directly on the woman there. I'll show you this in Das Studio here. And also while we're there, I'll give you a few exciting little uh, tips and tricks. So we'll wander around the scene. This is it framed up here and I'll go and switch to my perspective view and give you a wide overview of what this looks like here. And also how I arrived at this shot. This is not what the scene comes as. This looks more like a vignette right now. Uh, the real scene, I've copied that out so I can, I could show you this. If I switch that off and that on again, takes a little bit longer to load. Then this is really what the set comes in with. So this is, just to be clear here, this is the Bonnie Mega Bundle. This is what this comes with. And it is the FG Detective Office, uh, Detective Room. This is the set I'm talking about. That comes with this bundle. So there's, there's Bonnie, of course, Bonnie HD is in there. There's these three super delicious black and white shaders. There's hats, there's hair, there's poses. There's three sets in here. This is one set. There's also the perfect pinups film noir sitting room set. And there's also an outdoor set. And there's a luxury passenger train. So very, very cool. So yeah, this is the detective room and this is what it comes as. And uh, I had a question from a supporter the other day and she said, hey, I'm, I find it really difficult to get started with with when scenes look like this, because this is not really what we want to see. What we'd like to see is really inside here. But it's also difficult to wander around here because we constantly see we see walls when I when I walk around. So the way I deal with that is that I use my universal manipulator selection guy here. He's also under tools, universal. And then I go and uh, have a look at what is what in the set. So when you select something, it just goes and opens itself up in the scene tab. So on the, if I select this wall here, there's a little eyeball icon on the bottom. If I select that, then the eyeball goes away and also the object is no longer visible in the scene. And this is a process that you have to go through when you want to shoot something like a film set. So imagine it's like a film set. So any object that's in your way, you just select and get rid of. And it's a little 
bit of work <laughs> to begin with, but once you've done it, you don't have to do it again. And the cool thing about sets like this is you can literally shoot in from every angle. So these are the things that I've removed to make it more palatable, but there's a lot of stuff here on the side that also should really go away like this. We don't really need that sofa or the arrangement of whatever there are certificates or whatnot. There's another one here. You might also want to consider replacing or removing objects that not just that are in the way, but they're also things that don't fit in with the time period. So in my case, I thought I'm going to have something that'll be kind of a 30s, 40s inspired film noir set and a tape recorder uh, in a detective office wouldn't exist at that point. So those are things that might not fit in with world building. So they also have to go or they have to be replaced with items that would fit the story you're telling better. And then I usually go use the A, W, S and D keys to move around. And I'll use this tool here that is called the scene navigator, which allows me to left click and drag in the viewport and literally wander around the set like if it was a first person video game. And then Q goes up, E goes down, much like the regular navigation controls. And that lets me now set up my scene. So this is how I wander around a set and then I'll, I'll frame up something that I find interesting or I just have a look around and I'm thinking, oh yeah, okay, this is, this is something I could shoot against. Maybe, you know, she opening the safe or something. So that is, that is how I do that. And that is then eventually how I've arrived at the camera framing. And then I put a character in. I'd usually dress the character outside of this scene, so in a completely empty scene. And then I find a pose for the character and then I import her into that master scene, set up the camera, and then it's on to lights. Bonnie is kind of intersecting with the floor here, but it doesn't matter. This is uh, Rosa Maria here, by the way, and this is Bonnie. Bonnie, you know, it doesn't matter that she's intersecting here. I've positioned her just keeping in mind that we see the hand. And and whatever that looks like outside the framing here, we don't mind. It's just one of those things. So yeah, that's uh, if something is outside the framing, uh, you don't want to fix it because it's just time you don't want to you don't want to spend on there. One other thing, I've given her a face light to brighten up her face. But right now that I'm showing you this, it really is in the way there. This is in filament. We also have this in other things like the texture shaded view. You see those types of objects displayed. Like Blender has that as well. They're kind of these overlays that, you know, it's it's good to have them. But uh, sometimes they're just really in the way, especially if you wanted to preview something. So I'd like to see the light effect, but I don't really want to see the, the actual light source. And there's a really exciting little thing no matter which viewport you use uh, i'm going to show you this it's in the draw settings tab so i've got mine docked here draw settings if you don't have it head over to window panes draw settings and then dock it somewhere sensibly or just open it up then close it down again and under drawing there's this thing here which is called draw avatars and if you disable that option then all those types of things go away so in case you don't want to see them temporarily uh, then you can just switch them off so anything like cameras and other kind of objects that would be drawn in you can just go disable with that like these things i've got the light object here and i've got my camera here and i've got this big bright white spot in front of her face and you know i just while i'm working on it i just want to see the light effect and i don't want to see that cluttering my views so right black and white is also happening directly in DAS Studio. So if I go switch this back to filament, then things become color again, uh, because this effect is something that is applied through the tone mapping tab. And that is something else that's, that's really neat to change the look and feel of your image. I like using contrast enhancements uh, just for preview purposes there. And I'll show you where that is. That's on your render settings tab under something called tone mapping here. Here it is. So under render settings, if you don't have that dock, then do dock it. You need to go in there quite frequently. And under tone mapping, you've got quite a lot of settings, one of which is saturation right down here. Can we see that? Yes, just about kind of at the bottom here. So I've turned that to zero. One is the default and one is going to make my picture colorful again but 100% color. You can also increase the color. So to something like two or like, you know, five or 10, that's a nice little effect here. If you want to just get a visual representation of what this is going to look like in 
with more color and you can just preview that right inside the tone mappings tab. Uh, likewise, you can also desaturate it. You don't have to put it to zero. You can put it to something like 0.3 and that has a little bit of color in there still, but it's like it's more or less black and white. So that's how I've made the scene. Then I saw so I dropped items in. I, I adjusted things. I made the poses for the characters outside of this scene, saved them as sub scenes and then brought them into the scene. 